Hey everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So today I'm going to show you how I've made this little gift box here. I have very similar on the channel. They're just all different sizes. So I'll link up, a, you know, a playlist here for you to have a little look. But I did think when I was putting it together, if you had this as like the roof, this could be a cute little gingerbread house or just, a, you know, in the style of a house, for like a new home gift or something. Very easy to make. I've just got a little ribbon closure there, but you could use magnets or hook and loop here if you would rather. And then you just open it up and then just pull the ribbon through there. I have to take the tag off that one like so and it will reveal the gift you can see how it all closes up on the side there and you've got you know lots of space inside for your gift so let me show you how to make it so i've used the lovely papers here from the holly jolly christmas paper pad by simply made crafts i've used this already this one here and this one was for the push and slide gift box that i made so today I'm using the holly, which is this one here. And then you can see I used the snowfall Ponsettia one there on this pink one. So I thought the craft card worked really nice with this particular pattern. And I've also used my lovely linen print embossing folder on both of these for the plain cardstock at the top there. So it's pretty straightforward. You want two pieces of 10 by nine and a half. And along the 10 inch side, you're gonna score it two and a half and nine and a half. And then rotate it so that half inch tab is at the bottom. And you're gonna score again at two and a half and then six and a half. Pop it back along this side. You could do this one when I give you those measurements, but you also just put a little marker at one and a quarter just at the top there. That's where we're going to do a little bit of scoring. You can see what I've done here. So do that twice. And then for the closure, you'll want this piece here, which is seven by two and a half. And along the two and a half side, you're going to score at one. Okay. Again, I've stuck a lot of the mats and layers down. I've said in a few videos now, I've started to do them. I think it's because I'm preparing the tutorials, but I'm just sticking a lot of it down when it's all flat. So you'll want two pieces of six and three quarter by three and three quarter for the front and back bottom portion. For like the roof part, same measurement again, but these pieces are two and three quarters. And then you'll want two pieces of two and a quarter by three and three quarters for the sides. And then you'll want two pieces of two and three quarter by two and a quarter and I'll tell you how to cut that in a moment for the lid this piece here is one and a quarter by six and three quarters so I'm going to fold and burnish these score lines and I'm going to stick the pattern paper down on this piece Okay, so with this piece here, which was your two and a quarter by two and three quarters, along the two and a quarter side, just want to mark in the middle. So it would be one and one eighth, like so. And then using your scissors or your trimmer, you're going to cut from that pencil mark down to each corner. Like so. So if the pattern is directional, make sure that that pencil mark is at the top. First of all, you just need to do some quick score lines. So that's all stuck down. So within this rectangle here, from that little marker that you did earlier, you're going to score down to each corner of that rectangle. So just like you've cut this piece from that marker down to each corner, you're going to score this one. Both those score lines need to be valley folds, like so. And then you'll see, if I just fold that one right over, like so. And then you'll see your triangle now to stick that one. Okay, so then we can do a little bit of cutting. So you'll have your half inch tab on the right hand side. How I cut this piece is how you're going to cut both of these pieces. So you're going to cut up that first score line just to the first score line again and again here just cutting up to that first score line and then just remove that piece like so and then you just want to snip 
this little score line just up to that score line there. You don't have to, but some of you, depending on the different weight cards that you use, you might find just loosening that. So it's, it's like a little hinge there will just help. And then just take a little wedge off of here and here. And I'm just gonna take a wedge off of this one here. Okay, so I've now got my two pieces exactly the same. So now we can stick them together. So I'm gonna use my quick grab glue and run the glue all the way down this tab here. It doesn't matter which piece you do this on. And then just focus on that base score line, just down here, and then run that along. So it all lines up like so. And then just flip the whole thing over, make sure it's nice and secure. And then bring this one over. And again, add your glue. All down there and then fold that one over so you can see the whole thing folds flat so if you want to batch make these and you want to store them don't stick the base down when i go to do that next do that at the very end you can still attach the lid whilst it's flat as well next i'm going to stick the base down so i always decide if you've got a front or a back some of you might have stamped maybe a sentiment here or have different papers i'm going to pop the back one down first and I'm just going to cover this with my glue. As I always say, if you want to, you know, reinforce the base, maybe you've got something heavier going in there, just add another piece of cardstock in here, or maybe some grey board or something. And if you're using the construction glue, that's going to really, you know, kind of strengthen the base anyway. And then just fold those sides in and then close that down. As you'll see, all of that's all concealed inside there. And then we've got that nice finish on the front there. So now because you've folded your triangle pieces, you should see that they go in really nicely, like so. Okay, I'm going to take this one. Okay, I'm going to use the quick grab glue for this one. Just run that all along that half inch tab. And then lay it down and just sit that on the back there, making sure that it runs right along the score line there. And you can see there, if you fold it over, that'll help you just kind of make sure it's in place and give you a surface to push against as well. Okay, so now if you want to add magnets or hook and loop, you could do that next. You can see that will just close it down nicely. But I'm going to add my eyelets here. So I think I came in one and a half from this. I oh know it was two. So two inches in. And what I did, first of all, is marked two inches in on the flap. So I'm going to do this about halfway down. So I can see two inches is just there. And then again, come across this side. And again, just make sure you're getting it in the middle, like so. And then I've got my punch here. I'm just going to line that up. Pencil mark. So, and then if you close it again, you can then use your pencil and just mark again underneath, like so. Punch your holes again. And now when I close it, that all lines up. So I'm going to add my ribbon. So then I just want to add, this is optional. But I do like to add a little bit of hardware. So I've got the eyelets here and they're just going to slot in those little holes there. And then just using the setting, the eyelet set on the end here, and just squeeze that over the top. And that will set those now in place. So then all that's left to do is add the ribbon. So I'm going to thread it through the inside, first of all. Like so. And then just start to feed it through 
the uh, flap there. And as you pull it, it will go to close like so. Just pull that through. Both of the sentiments actually are from my festive card kit that was in the Papercraft Essentials magazine. I've got so many of them, so I thought they, they went quite well with this. I'm just going to pop that through there and then tie my bow. And there's the finished gift box. Really pretty straightforward and quick to make. Like I said, good for batch making and gonna work for most occasions as well. Just change your papers. I think these would look really nice for Easter, especially if you maybe cut like some little windows here. It could be like a little chicken coop or it could be some kind of basket. You could have it all in craft card and have a bigger window and all the eggs inside. Add a little, you know, paper handle. I think that would look super cute as well. So there you have it. So as always, thank you for watching. I will have some other fun gift boxes popping up now. I'll link the other one using these same papers for anybody that's got the paper pad. And as always, thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed and you've enjoyed today, hit the subscribe button and click on that notification bell and that way you won't miss out on any future videos. See you all again soon. Bye.